We're going to talk about two kinds of collisions, inelastic collisions and perfectly elastic collisions. And we're going to draw on how we can put ourselves in the reference frame of the center of mass by moving along with the center of mass. So two carts collide at 2 meters per second and 4 meters per second. And they stick together and move as one object. You can imagine two cars crumpling together and moving along. And we don't know what the final speed is. We recognize a way to solve this is by conserving momentum. That the initial momentum of the two carts here together must equal the final momentum. Because in a closed system, momentum is always the same, remains the same. Yes, it's true, I could put my big hand in there and smack them and push them and that would change the momentum. But that would not be a closed system. If it were, like if this happened in outer space, you'd recognize if I whacked on this system and, and changed the momentum and gave it momentum to the left, then I myself would gain some momentum to the right. And so what this means is the total momentum before must equal the total momentum after. And so we can calculate that. Momentum is mass times velocity. We have 2 kilogram meters per second and 8 kilogram meters per second. And so we add them together and we get 10 kilogram meters per second. Now we recognize we made an awful mistake in that momentum is a vector. And so we define the positive direction to the right, let's say. And so now we can see this is minus 4 meters per second. This is minus 8 kilogram meters per second. And this is wrong. And that the total momentum is actually negative 6 kilogram meters per second. We need to add momentum as vectors. We can look at the final result as one mass of 3 kilograms moving in, in one direction or the other. So by conserving momentum, that the total momentum is equal to mass times velocity, we can now solve for the final velocity and just say it's the total momentum divided by the mass. And we divide that 6 kilogram meters per second by 3 kilograms. We have 2 meters per second moving to the left. We can check our work to make sure that we've conserved momentum. Mass times velocity, 3 kilograms times 2 meters per second is 6 kilogram meters per second. So this was an inelastic collision. Did we conserve energy? Well, you immediately answer yes, we always conserve energy. But did we conserve kinetic energy? And we can go through and do the calculation. Please do for each mass. And you'll find initially, the one kilogram had two joules. The two kilogram had 16 joules for 18 joules of energy total. And our final two masses together only had six joules of energy. So we've lost 12 joules of energy to heat in the collision. And you'll note, if you hammer a nail in, it's hot when you finish nailing. A lot of kinetic energy in an inelastic collision is turned in to heat. This becomes very evident if you take a look at this in the perspective of you moving along with that final velocity of 2 meters per second. I call this the velocity of the center of mass. What do you see at the end? Well, you're moving right along with it, so you don't see any motion and there's no kinetic energy. So did it have kinetic energy before, according to you? So let's take a look at if these were moving. So go over here. Now, if I'm moving at 2 meters per second to the left, and I see this guy, I'm going to see it's moving at 4 meters per second. And likewise, if this guy's coming behind me at 4 meters per second and I'm moving in the same direction at 2 meters per second, I'll see a velocity of negative 2 meters per second. So now if we calculate the momenta, we have 4 kilogram meters per second and negative 4 kilogram meters per second in our new reference frame. We call this reference frame the reference frame of the center of mass as opposed to the laboratory reference frame that you're sitting and watching this go on. And we love it because in the reference frame of the center of mass, the total momentum is always zero. And we recognize this whole thing is moving in this direction at 2 meters per second with respect to the laboratory reference frame. And so according to us, these are the velocities. And in the end, the thing's not moving at all. It has no kinetic energy 
In the beginning, it did have kinetic energy of 8 joules and 4 joules respectively. Please check that. So we have a total energy in the beginning of 12 joules and no energy at the end. And so when we look at the two reference frames, they don't, they don't agree on the total energy because one is moving with respect to the other. But they both recognize we've lost 12 joules of kinetic energy to heat. So what about an elastic collision? Now all hell breaks loose because you have two different masses and you don't know either of their velocities. But what we do know is we've conserved kinetic energy. So now you have two unknowns for two velocities and you have two equations. That is we need to conserve momentum and we need to conserve kinetic energy as well, one half mv squared. Now there's a very straightforward way to solve these simultaneous equations because you have two unknowns and you have two equations. Please look up in any text. It will be two pages of math. Very lovely. You can solve it. I want to show you a different way because if I do that, I'm going to make a mistake somewhere. We can solve this very eloquently by simply drawing this picture and looking at this in the reference frame of the center of mass because what we have here is in the reference frame of center mass, we know that the momentum is zero. And the momentum has to remain zero. And so these guys have to have equal and opposite momentum. So for instance, we could say after the collision, both of their velocities are half of what they used to be. And that would conserve momentum. But we'd lose energy. We could also double their velocities and that would conserve momentum. But then we would have more kinetic energy. And we recognize the only way to solve this with these guys coming in with equal and opposite momenta is that then when they go out, they go out with the exact same speeds they came in in opposite directions. And so is this our total answer? No, it's not because we recognize that this whole system in the laboratory reference frame is moving along at two meters per second in the negative direction. And so if you're moving at negative four meters per second and the whole thing's moving at negative two meters per second, the laboratory will see you as negative six. Likewise, when you add these two velocities, you will get zero. So what the laboratory sees <clears throat> is this guy coming in at four meters per second stops dead and this guy takes off in the opposite direction at negative six meters per second. Now let's go check. We have a total momentum of negative six kilogram meters per second in both of these. Over here, the total momenta is zero because all I did was turn these guys around in opposite directions. We can look at the kinetic energy. Again, we start with 18 joules and we finish with 18 joules in this one kilogram mass. Please check that. Over here, we've already connect, uh, calculated the initial kinetic energy. And the final kinetic energy we know right away is going to be the same because the speeds are the same as they used to be. So 1 half mv squared will be the same for both. So we recognize a way to solve an elastic collision between two bodies coming in opposite directions, or one catching up with the other is to find the speed of the center of mass by finding how fast they would go if they stuck together, putting ourselves in that reference frame. And now if we have an elastic collision, we know that they have to come in and out with the same speeds in opposite directions. And we take these speeds right here and we transpose them back into the reference frame of the laboratory by adding this velocity on. Please do it both ways. You can solve the simultaneous equations or draw this picture. See what you like best. Thanks.